Hey guys, Mikosh here. Today we'll be discussing how to craft coal conversion gloves. They are a very important part of the cold conversion tornado shot as they convert 60% of your physical damage, which means they are one of the most important items and it is one of your priority to actually get once you do the swap. They are scary to look at sometimes, however, they are very simple to craft and once you've done it once or twice, you're basically never going to need a guide anymore because of how simple they are to make. Now, before we enter this video, I will assume a few things. The first one being that you watched my bow build, uh, my uh, bow crafting video, which means you understand what having what mods are able to roll on an item, which means the three suffix and three prefix and how to use meta crafting to manipulate that to your advantages, as well as what exactly is fractured modifiers so i'm just going to assume you know all of that however i will be explaining what is eldritch currency and how to use eldritch crafting so if you don't know what that is i suggest you watch it but if you have knowledge upon that you can completely skip this part uh to the guide actually so for eldritch crafting eldritch crafting is actually divided in two the implicit crafting and the explicit crafting so let's first start with the implicit crafting for the implicit crafting there are a few currency you are supposed to know about the first one being the Icor, the second one being the Ember, and then the third being the Orb of Conflict. So what are they? The Icor are actually just a type of currency that drops from the Eater of World influence. The Ember is from the uh, Searing Exarch. And then the Orb of Conflict is going to be um, from bosses. For the Icor and the Ember, there are actually four types of currency in that category. They go from Lesser, Greater, grand and exceptional it's the same thing for the ember lesser greater i don't have the grand one sadly and then the exceptional so what do they do so what they're going to do is if you have a non-influenced item so if the inf the item is already influenced by something else it is you, you cannot use it uh, and what they're going to do is they're going to actually add a type of influence so if you use the iker it's going to give the eater of world influence as you can see here, the gloves have turned blue, which means you have the influence of the Eater of World. Now, if you add the Ember as well, it will become red and blue, which means you now have the Eater of World influence and Searing Exarch influence. What's really cool about that is they actually add implicits. So for every influence you have, it's going to add an implicit for a total of two. So as you can see here, we have the 34% increase evasion and the add uh, that amount of cold damage to attacks. Those are going to be two modifiers that you can add thanks to your uh, your Icors and your Embers. As you can see here, they have the lesser tag. That means they are on the lower tier. That is actually tier 6. And there is six tiers to it. There's the lesser for tier 6, greater at tier 5. Tier 4 is the grand. Tier 3 is exceptional. The tier 2 is exquisite. And tier 1 is perfect. Now, if I add the greater, as you can see, it's going to become a greater while unique enemies. Now, if I add the grand, the tier is going to become grand. And if I add the, um, sorry, if I add the exceptional, it's, be it's going to become exceptional. Now, how do you go from exceptional to exquisite and exquisite to grand? You're going to be using something called the orb of conflict. So what does orb of conflict do is it's basically a 50-50 of augmenting one of the implicit and reduces one tier of these other implicit so let's say i want my my exceptional implicit to become exquisite i would have to orb of conflict and hope that it brings it to exquisite now it did not make it to ex ex exquisite sorry it made it from it lowered one tier and it augmented the other one by one tier so i would have to restart it went to exceptional and the other one went to greater Right? So it's always you take one tier from one of the implicit and you give it to the other. Now, if I retry again, it goes back to grand. I retry again, exceptional, exquisite. Boom. I now have exquisite. As you can see, the second implicit that loses one tier, well, well, as I said, loses one tier up until the sixth tier. Example, you're on the sixth tier and it, um, well, it's a 50-50. Yeah. Let's say it reduces that tier and augments the other one. It will disappear under tier six. Okay. So there's no tier seven. So that's how you actually manipulate the implicits. And it is very powerful. You can make some, you know, some decent uh, items. For example, here you have the hatred 30% increased aura effect and then the 20% increased 
effective non curse auras. That's how you actually make those those mods is by using Eldritch Crafting for the implicits. Now there is a second part to Eldritch Crafting, which is explicit crafting. And you're gonna be using three types of currency, the Chaos Orb, the Orb of Annulment, and the Exalted Orb, but they all have the Eldritch in front, right? So they are a bit different compared to the normal one. This is the normal Annulment, this is the normal Exalt, and this is the normal Chaos. So they are different, different, and why? Because they're gonna change, well, they're gonna affect your item in a different way depending on your implicits. So for all three of them, if the Searing Exarch is dominant, it will only affect the prefix. If the Eater of World is dominant, it will only affect the suffix. So as we know, a Chaos Orb will actually just roll all the modifiers on an item unpredictably. Now, if you had the Searing Exarch as dominant, so right now we don't have a Searing Exarch, so let's make the Searing Exarch uh, dominant. By the way, if you use a lower tier currency on the item, it will actually lower the implicit. So as you can see here, we have a greater Eater of World. If I use a lesser, it will become a lesser. So let's say you want now to have the the um, Searing Exarch as dominant because you only want to reroll your prefix. As you can see here, we have only two prefix and two suffix. If I reroll them, it will reroll the prefix, but the suffix do not change. Now, if on the opposite, you would have the Eater of World as dominant, it will reroll the suffixes. So my prefix are not going to change and my suffix are going to change. And that works for the Orb of Annulment. So right now, my dominant is the Eater of World, which means it will only affect my suffix. So if I hit it, it will take off my suffix and it will never take off my prefix because of the, um, the fact that my, um, sorry, the fact that my Eater of World is the dominant modifier, which means it's the higher tier. And same thing with Exalt. It's only going to Exalt Slam suffixes and it will not Exalt Slam prefixes unless I change my dominant implicit to Eater of, uh, to Exarch and then I would be able to slam for a prefix. So this is very useful because you're able to manipulate certain modifiers for your item. Now, when you're making basic gloves for cold conversion, you're only going to be using really implicit crafting and the explicit crafting is not going to be used as much. However, if you want to go for the, you know, higher tier cold conversion gloves, such as those ones, you will be using uh, Eldritch crafting for explicits as well. But it's always good to know more and hopefully this part helped. So now let's get to the crafting of the actual gloves. All right, so let's hop on trade. First of all, to be talking about the bases of the gloves, there's usually gonna be two bases I'm gonna aim for depending on my budget. When you're on the entry level side, I'd like to go for the fractured suppressed spell damage chance. And if you have a lot more currency, I'm gonna go for the increased damage with hits against chilled enemies. So let's just first of all, talk about the entry level. There's, I'm often gonna aim for either tier two or tier one spell suppression. If you go for the tier, um, tier two spell suppression, it's often gonna cost just a few chaos right here. We see that it costs between 10 to let's say 25 chaos uh, safely um, at this time of the recording. However, if you jump to tier one, it's often I think going to aim, gonna go to the one divines. Yeah, right here, the base is gonna cost one divine. And if you go for the max roll tier one, so 14%, it's gonna jump uh, twice as much, maybe, yeah, four divines to get there. Now, something to note uh, when making your item, if you, there's gonna be multiple ways of making this item. So if you don't even go for the fractured spell suppress, to be able to roll tier one spell suppress, you need your item to be at least level 85. So keep that in mind. Now, the second, a uh, fracture that I like to go, which is the more expensive one, is going to be uh, the good old damage with hits against chilled enemies, which can go from 1 to 125, 150 uh, divines just for that fracture. It is very expensive. However, there is also the uh, possibility of actually you doing it yourself. So if we go here, for the um, fractured item, no. So this mod, you cannot roll yourself. However, you can buy it. And right here, you can buy it for, now those bases are into bases, so you would need to find a good base. Right here, let's say the Vol Gauntlet are okay as a base. Uh, it's two divines. 
and then you would have to actually just fracture it yourself and the cost of that is fracture orb fracturing orb is let's say 25 divines and you have one chance on four so it's a 100 divine uh, the odds of you hitting that thing is going to be once every 100 divines so it's a bit cheaper than the market however you could be lucky you could be unlucky so i like to buy my fractures because i am one unlucky motherfucker now let's go first with the lower end right because i know a lot of pillars are not gonna have 150 divines just to spend on the base of the item so i like to go for either dex or a strength dex gloves so i'm just gonna go strength dex just for the example we want at least level 80 and um, the quality doesn't really matter now you would have suppress Sorry if you, you guys hear like a bit of shaking noise in the back. It's, I don't know, I, I wasn't able to set up the mic properly. Uh, yeah, so let's say the item that you have, well, it's often not going to be magic. It's just going to be a random item just that looks like this, right? So let's say it just looks like this. Then you would, I like to, what I like to do is actually just use a perfect fossil, fossil to have it at least above level, uh, above 20% quality. You can make it 20% quality with uh, armor scraps and that's it. Or you can just hit it until you have above. You don't have to go for the 30%, especially on the lower side of the you know budget spectrum. But the quality really doesn't impact much. So it's just kind of a thing I like to have to, to have going. Now, the how does crafting the glove work? So what I like to do is I like to finish up my suffixes. And then once my suffixes are done, I go for the unveil and uh, for the cold convert, which is a prefix. And that's basically how you're going to make every single, that's how I make every single pair of gloves. What are the best modifiers as suffixes? It's going to be spell suppress, uh, the, um, any tier one attribute, chaos resistance, and attack speed. Now we have the spell suppress already as it is fractured, and we can actually guarantee attack speed thanks to the essence of zeal. So you, the higher the tier, the more expensive it is, right? Um, so I'm going to go for tier 1 in this example, but if you don't have the currency, you can always go for a lower tier of essence. So no matter what you hit with your essence, you're always going to get the attack speed, and then you're going to roll until you have something that is interesting. We don't want any resistance. Tier 7 dexterity is sad, and fire resistance, no. So let's just roll. You could um, accuracy. I like to have an accuracy roll uh, off, uh, as well when I'm lower level, which means I don't have enough points to spec into accuracy in the tree because of omniscience you know omniscience reduces your accuracy because you don't have any dexterity however i i often like the moment i have a, enough levels so 92 93 i don't really need more accuracy so i'm just gonna roll until i have what i want if i ever get what i want Okay, tier 2 dexterity, you could settle depending on your budget. Uh, we are going to settle because this is going to be the lower end. Now, we have our suffixes that are completely full. And the next step is going to be adding the metamod suffix cannot be changed. Right. Now, let's just say you were rolling your essences and all of your modifiers are full. So you cannot craft this on the bench. What do you do? Usually, you would have to use the Orb of Annulment, which removes a random modifier from the item. However, by doing so, you run the risk of annulling your attack speed and your dexterity, which you don't want. That's a 40% chance of you breaking your item. Now, because this is a piece of armor, we actually have access to the Eldritch Crafting, which was explained earlier on in the video. We don't want to touch our suffix, which means we want our Eldritch Currency to only affect prefixes. So to do that, um, we're going to use something called the Eldritch Annul Orb of Annulment. And we need the Searing Exarch to be dominant, to be only to, to remove only prefix. So Searing Exarch, as we remember, is red. So just make sure, uh, if you don't have any implicit, well, you can just hit a lesser. But let's say you had a Grand Icor, so the, grand, the blue one, you would have to use a lesser to make it lower tier, and then use, you know, a greater orb for the red one, so then you could safely annul. So you could safely annul, and as you can see, no matter what I do, let's let's just say I spam, no matter what I do, I cannot take any of the suffix modifiers, right? So I can safely, safely annul one modifier. You don't need to uh, annul all the modifiers because we're going to be going for the suffix to not be changed, and then we're going to use something called 
the veiled chaos modif veiled chaos so what is a veiled chaos it's basically a chaos orb so it's going to re-roll an item but it's going to guarantee a veiled modifier and we want the veiled modifier to be cold a uh, physical damage converted to cold and that is a prefix the thing is by filling our suffixes and then using the suffix cannot be changed we 100% guarantee that first our suffix don't change which means we don't have to restart over and we also guarantee that our veiled modifier is going to be a prefix so we're going to hit the chaos the veiled chaos on our item and we got the veiled prefix as you can see here it's that shiny little thing now there is a large pool of, mo of mods that can go from veiled prefix. So we want to lower the pool of mod and we're gonna craft convert, if you have it or else you can ask a buddy, to either craft physical damage converted to fire or to lightning, which means when we unveil, we cannot have this modifier to be uh, as an option. So we have a higher chance of getting cold convert. We will unveil and look at this, we were lucky. Physical damage converted to cold. Our next step will then be, well, before we get to the next step, let's just say you unveiled and it did not give you the cold damage. What do you do? You pick a random modifier, you craft suffix cannot be changed, and you start the process all over again. Now you might get, um, you know an extra an extra modifier or two if you get an extra uh, two modifiers uh, please annul basically all you're gonna have to do is just uh, eldritch annul and hopefully hit something that is not your veiled prefix now let's tier four life is okay to be honest so i would keep it uh, i would craft yet again convert and hopefully we hit cold damage this time unlucky you would have to restart and it might take a few times for you to actually hit it now we were, uh, well, lucky yet again, we got the cold convert. Now we have five modifiers that are done, and there is one last modifier that we want, which is going to be on the bench. I like to craft life on the bench. However, here we have a prefix that is life, which means we cannot craft. And the second modifier that I like to go is going to be damage during flask effect. A lot of people go for the damage while leeching, which is a higher number. However, because you're on full life often, um, it's the, the modifier is actually useless. So I like to go for the um, damage during flask effect. Damage during any flask effect. You could re-roll until you get the 28%, um, but this is a low end type of glove, so we're not gonna break our head. Finally, the last step to your gloves are going is gonna be uh, rolling your implicits. So you're actually gonna aim for something. The best implicit um, for the blue guys, so the eater of world is gonna be a uh, physical damage converted to cold, right, for the total of 60%. And the best one for the red one, or the Exarch, Searing Exarch, is going to be either attack speed, I think it's going to be, um, or gain one rage per number of second. So what I like to do is, depending on my budget, I'm going to go for either the Grand or the Exceptional Icor. For the example, I'm just going to go for the Exceptional, and I'm going to roll until I hit the cold damage, uh, physical damage converted to cold, just like I did right now. As you can see here, the exceptional is a tier three. Uh, if you go here, converted, it's gonna be tier three and we cannot go higher. Now the thing is, if you do the math, 25% plus 31% actually equals 56%, which is not 60%. So how do I do that? How do I make it 60% uh, in total? I'm going to be using the Orb of Conflict, which explained earlier on, if you want to check that. It's basically a 50-50 of augmenting one of the implicit and reducing one of the implicit. So let's just YOLO it. Uh, we were unlucky. It went down to 20. Let's try again. It's down to 15, back to 20, 25, 20, 15, 10, and it disappeared. You would have to reroll until you get another uh, 25%. So let's say you did the sad task of rerolling yet again at 25%. You would have to orb of conflict and hopefully hit 30% for love. Yes, okay. So now your total is 60%. If you really are short on currency, you could, okay, just because you're short in currency, you could skip the part of the orb of conflict um, and only stick to 50 to 55, uh, well, what is it? 55 to 59% converted to, to cold. It is okay, you won't die. However, 
if you're not 60% cold convert, you know, you're not immune to phys reflex physical damage and you don't have, you know, the full capacity of cold convert. Now, the last implicit is going to be the Searing Exarch, so the red dudes. You could go for the exceptional, however, I think that is the biggest waste of currency. Either go for the great or the grand. Why so? Because we're going to be going for the gain one rage. And as you can see, uh, tier 6, which is the lowest, is gain one rage every 1.2. 1.1, 1 second, and 0 0.9. So the difference between 0 0.9 and 0 and 1 second, or even 1.1 second, is so low that it is often not worth the difference in currency. So you would have to roll until you get, let's just say, tier 4, and you would get the gain 1 rage with attacks no more than once every 1 second. This is how to make entry-level cold convert gloves. It is a very simple process. There is literally no luck involved except in the unveil, the, or else it's pretty much you're going to hit it if you just spam enough. Now, the implicits might take a lot of spamming, uh, by the way. Now, I, I shortened it with the example right here because I can craft any modifier that I want with because this is a, it's an emulator. However, you know, it might, hit, it might take you 40, 50, 60 tries to get the implicit that you want. So don't be discouraged. Uh, it's going to take a bit of time. However, it is not a complicated process. So this is the first and easiest way I like to make my gloves. So now let's hop on the second way of making the gloves. The second way I like to make my gloves is going to be pretty much the same thing, actually. Um, just that the fracture mod is going to be different. It can either be chaos resistance if I need chaos resistance in my build, or it can be the damage against shield enemies fractured mod, which is the more expensive side. The step I'm going to go for is going to make it perfect. So the quality is already 30%, but I would take the perfect fossil and I would spam until I get uh, the 30% quality, which I think is actually one chance in 30. Not sure though, but uh, definitely is a lot more complicated for whatever reason. Okay, so we hit the 30%. Next step is I'm going to go for the Essences, Essence of Zeal for attack speed, the highest tier possible. And you could roll for Chaos Resistance or you could roll for any any um, other imp uh, suffix. But usually if you have the currency, you can go for the Chaos Resistance. However, it's going to take a lot of time, I think, to be able to hit it. So let's do this. But yeah, I completely forgot actually, but um, another modifier that's actually sometimes better, sorry, is um, Spell Suppression, which uh, I was lucky I actually had Spell Suppression. So it's either going to be Chaos Resistance, sorry, or Spell Suppression. So Attack Speed, Damage Against Shield Enemy, Suppress, or Chaos Resistance is actually what I like to go for. The next step is going to be Suffix Cannot Be Changed. We're going to Unveil yet again. We're going to Block for the Convert right with either fire or lightning and hopefully we hit the cold damage boom we were lucky we hit the cold damage next step is life well not life for the next step is actually exile slam this armor evasion okay that's a random modifier we go for life and we craft life onto our gloves and hopefully hit 70 please good all right and final step will be eldritch currency I'm going to go for the exceptional. Well, this time I actually have 35% on the unveil, which means I don't need to um, orb of conflict my tier three because my tier three is a 25%, but 25 plus 35 equals exactly 60. So I'm going to roll until I hit uh, cold damage converted. So here I have the wild unique. So that was not good. We're, we're going to roll until we have it. Uh, it might take 50, 60, uh, 60 tries, but you will hit the 25. Now, if this wasn't 35% on the uh, on the prefix, you would have to orb of conflict, but we were lucky this time. Now it's going to be time uh, for the red guy, and we're going to go for the gain one rage uh, every uh, no more than once every second. So we hit gain one rage with attacks no more than once every 0 0.9 seconds, and boom, this is how to make the second pair of gloves which is going to be the higher end type of gloves. Now, um, 
sorry, for that swap. I've shown the example in, uh, like in the beginning of the video, I had a different type of glove, uh, which actually had an abyssal, ju uh, abyssal socket. And I, a lot of players actually think that it is very complicated to do so. It is really simple. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that, which is what I actually like to go for on my higher end. I, I just like to stack abyssal jewels in the end, um, just, just for funds. So let, let me just delete everything. So this would be your gloves and you would you would need it to make it rare. So if it's blue or magic, you would use a, um, I always forget the name of that thing. What is it called again? Well, uh, this, <laughs> you would upgrade it to, um, to rare. And then you would actually use fossil craft, well, make it 30% first of all. And then you would actually use fossil crafting for the hollow, the hollow fossil um, guarantees an abyssal socket and basically that's how you actually get um, a, uh, an abyssal socket on your items it's very simple now the next step I would actually use the hollow fossil with the shuddering fossil which gives you more chances of getting a speed modifier and reduces the mana well it takes off all the mana um, modifiers so you would spam until you either get spell suppress if you're lucky uh, but usually or well tier one strength at this point of currency that you have, you don't really need more attributes. So I'm going to go for the increased attack speed and I'm going to go for tier one. So I'm going to roll until I hit tier one attack speed. Boom. Tier one attack speed. I have my abyssal socket and I have my damage with hits against chilled enemies. Now we are this is going to be only if you go for the high end of the high end and you're going to be splurging if you want that exactly what we're going to do next is we're actually going to use our eldritch crafting we're going to make it um we're going to make our eater of world or exarch dominant and we're going to chaos roll until we hit life and we're going to guarantee life so the tier one life is uh what it's between sorry wrong one Tier 1 life is between 80 to 89. So we're going to roll until, well, here we got tier 2 life, but let's say it was tier 1. So let's say we hit tier 1. Then you would go for the suffix cannot be changed. However, the next step is not going to be the veil chaos because the veil chaos will reroll the life and we can't guarantee. We're actually going to be using something called the Isling. So tier 4 Isling, what it does is it removes a modifier and adds a veiled modifier. Because we have suffix cannot be changed, it cannot remove one of our suffix, which means it can only remove our prefixes. And we have two prefixes now. We have life and the suffix cannot be changed. So we're going to hope that it hits suffix cannot be changed. So we're going to isling veil and it removed our life. If that happens, you would have to go back to your Eldritch crafting, re-roll your prefixes until you get life and then go back suffix cannot be changed. Uh, we're not going to redo that because that's just going to take too much time. Let's say, up, oh, you're lucky it hit the um, suffix cannot be changed. Then you would craft convert um, to guarantee that we don't get at least one of them. And you would unveil for the cold damage converted. Unlucky, we got the physical damage converted to lightning. If that happens, you would have to Eldritch Currency annul to hopefully annul the physical damage converted uh we were unlucky we hit life you would need to chaos and reroll life all over again but let's just say we um we were lucky i hope no let's say we were lucky or well let's say you just reroll because well i can never be lucky we go back to suffix and not be changed we isling again oop i almost messed up we go back to blocking convert fire and you would unveil for converted to coal. We got lightning. You would repeat the process all the way until you get converted to cold. And your prefixes are uh, your um, sorry, your explicits are done. Now, all you're going to have to do is change for during flask effect, right? You can't craft life if you have life as a modifier already. So craft this and now it's gonna be time to craft the implicit so back to 
exceptional icor until you get the convert tier three now because we don't have 35 percent you would have to orb of conflict to 30 percent we were lucky and then time to use the red dudes so the embers to get the gain one rage no more than uh, well depending on the tier no more than once or 0.9 seconds and this is how you make you know pretty much the highest tier of gloves you can go for for tornado shot this is what i use well this is what i used to use however i think with this amount of currency invested it's actually better to go for multi-link gloves which is something i'm going to be discussing in my next uh, build guide but if you really want to go for the high-end gloves uh, this is pretty high end you have the abyssal socket attack speed uh, damage uh, damage against shield enemies you have tier one life and you got all that conversion that you want so on that note this basically covers everything you need to know about crafting your gloves this is not set in stone if there's a modifier that you need okay let's say you were lucky and you hit uh, attribute well you know that when you're going to be making your chest or when you're going to be making your your boots you're not going to need uh, the attributes there you're going to go for more suppress or you're going to go for chaos Let's say you hit chaos resistance here. Well, you might not need your chaos resistance on your chest, right? So it's really depending on the mods that you have, you're lucky or you're going to use it, right? So that's why I prefer having an open mind on the uh, the mods that I want. I want chaos resistance. I want suppression. I want attack speed. I want attributes, right? So no matter what I get, I'm going to be happy with like half the time. If you specifically search for a single mod, uh, it will make the cost, of the, uh, the cost of the craft a lot higher, right? Um, so yeah. So unless you're going really high end and you need a specific mod, uh, just keep an open mind and choose any mod that is useful for your build. So um, I will make my <laughs> outro yet again. Uh, good luck on the craft, guys. Um, don't rage too much if you're a bit unlucky. It happens to everyone. Maybe on your next craft, you'll be luckier. Um, and most importantly, guys, have fun.